Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss CCNA version 7 packet tracer activity. Configure a WPA2 enterprise WLAN on the WLC. Before coming to this activity, friends, if you like to get any CCNA project support or CCNA version 7 online classes, you can contact our team using our website. Link you will get from the description below. And also, if you like to get this type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. And also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Now, coming back to our activity, here we can see our addressing table. Just we'll go through the objectives. In this activity, we will configure a new wireless LAN on a wireless LAN controller that is WLC including uh, the VLAN interface that uh, it will use. We will configure the wireless LAN to use a RADIUS server and WPA2 enterprise to authenticate users. We will also configure the WLC to uh, use an SNMP server. Here we can see those objectives. Configure a new VLAN interface on a WLC that is wireless LAN controller. Then configure a new uh, wireless LAN on a WLC. Configure a new scope on the WLC internal DSCP server. Then configure the WLC with SNMP settings. Then configure the WLC to user uh, to use a radius server to authenticate WLAN users. Secure a wireless LAN with WPA2 enterprise. Then connect host to the new WLC. Here we can see the scenario. Uh, we have already configured and tested the WLC with an existing WLAN. We configured WPA2-PSK for that uh, WLAN because it was to be used in a smaller business. We have been asked to configure and test a WLC topology that will be used in a larger enterprise. You know that WPA2-PSK does not scale well and is not appropriate to use in an enterprise network. This new topology will use a radius server and WPA2 enterprise to authenticate wireless LAN users. This allows administration of the user accounts from a central location and provides enhanced security and transparency because each account has its own username and password. In addition, user activity is logged on the server. In this lab, we will create a new VLAN interface. Use that interface to create a new uh, wireless LAN and secure that wireless LAN with WPA2 Enterprise. We will also configure the WLC to use the Enterprise Radius Server to authenticate users. In addition, you will configure the WLC to use a SNMP server. We will go to the instructions. In part 1, create a new WLAN. Step 1, create a new uh, VLAN interface. So each uh, WLAN requires a virtual interface uh, on the WLC. These interfaces are uh, known as dynamic interfaces. The virtual interface is assigned a VLAN ID and the traffic that uses the interface will be tagged as a VLAN traffic. This is why connections between the APs, the WLC and the router are over trunk ports. For the traffic from multiple VLANs to be transported through the network, Traffic for the WLAN VLANs must be trunked. Open the browser from the desktop of admin PC. Connect to the IP address of the WLC over HTTPS. Then log in with the username admin and password Cisco123. So here we will get the IP address of this WLC. We will go to our addressing table and here we can see its IP address. Uh, management and its IP address. Just I will copy that. Now we will go to this uh, admin PC. Click on this admin PC and uh, we can choose a browser. And paste that IP address here. And here we have to change this protocol to HTTPS. Then go. We can uh, log in with the credentials uh, given in this instruction. So click on login and uh, here the username is uh, admin. And the password is uh, Cisco123. Then click on login. Then click the controller menu and then click interfaces. 
from the menu on the left. You will see the default virtual interface and the management interface to which you are connected. Coming to this WLC, uh, here we can see now we are in this uh, menu monitor and here we can see uh, controller. You can click on this controller and here we can see interfaces. So here we can see interface name, management and virtual. So here we use this uh, management and here we can see the details, VLAN identifier, IP address, then interface type and other information. Click the new button in the upper right hand corner of the page. You may need to scroll the page to the right to see it. Okay, coming to our WLC, just to scroll to this right side and here we can see this button new. Click on this button new. Here we can see interface name and VLAN ID. Uh, we can see enter the name of the new interface. We will call it WLAN-5. So here we are going to give this interface a name as WLAN-5. Then we can see configure the VLAN ID as 5. So here we will uh, configure this uh, VLAN ID as 5. This is the VLAN that will carry traffic for the WLAN that we create later. Click apply. This leads to a configuration screen for the VLAN interface. So here we can see the apply button. We have to click on this apply. And here we can see that the configuration. Uh, window for this uh, VLAN interface right now first configure the interface to use physical port number one multiple VLAN interfaces can use the same physical port because the physical interfaces are uh, like uh, dedicated trunk ports so address the interface as follows uh, here we have to set this IP address 192.168.5.254 then network mask then here we can see the gateway also we have to set this primary dscp server here first of all we will configure the interface to use physical port number one we can scroll down and here we can see a physical information port number we will change it to one then we will set the ip address here we can see the ip address 192.168 dot 5 dot 254 then net mask 255.255.255.0 dot .255 and here we can set the gateway 192.168.5.1 and here we can see dscp information and we can set this uh, primary dscp server 192.168.5.1 here we can see the information we given now uh, user traffic for the WLAN that uses this VLAN interface will be on the 192.168.5.0/24 network the default gateway is the address of an interface on a router um, R1 then a DCP pool has been configured on the router the address that we configure here for DSCP tells the WLC to forward all DSCP request that it receives from host on the WLAN to the DSCP server on the router. Yes, yeah, so that's why we given this information here. Next, be sure to click apply to uh, enact your changes and click OK to respond to the warning message. Click save configuration so that your configuration will be in effect when the WLC restarts okay coming here we'll scroll up and here we can see apply click on this apply so changing the interface parameters causes the WLANs to be temporarily disabled and this may result in loss of connectivity for some clients okay we'll press okay now we will save our configuration uh, here we can see that option save configuration click on this so just press ok now coming to step 2 configure the WLC to use a radius server WPA2 enterprises use an external radius server to authenticate WLAN users 
individual user accounts with unique usernames and passwords can be configured on the radius server before the wlc can use the services of the radius server the wls must be configured with the server address now coming to step 2 configure the wlc to use a radius server wpa2 enterprise uses an external radius server to authenticate wlan users individual user accounts with the unique usernames and passwords can be configured on the radius server before the wlc can use the services of the radius server the wlc must be configured with the server address for that click the security menu on the wlc then click the new button and enter the ip address of the radius server in the server ip address field okay that's fine here we can see security tab click on this security and uh, we have to click the new button here we can see that new button and uh, we have to enter the ip address of the radius server in the server ip address field here we can see server ip address so we will get the ip address of our uh, uh, radius server here we can see radius server we will uh, copy this ip address and we will paste here The radius server will authenticate the WLC before it will allow the WLC to access the user account information that is on the server. Uh, this requires a shared secret value. Use Cisco123. Then confirm the shared secret and click apply. So here we can see that uh, a shared secret. We will give a Cisco123. Also, we have to confirm that shared secret. Then we have to click apply. And also, the given a note here it is not a good practice to reuse passwords. Yeah, that's correct because this password already we used Cisco123. But here we can see this activity uh, reuses passwords only to make the activity easier for you to complete and review. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so we will go and apply and uh, you just to make sure that uh, you are not going to uh, reuse these passwords coming to uh, step 3 create a new wlan create a new wlan use the newly created vlan interface for the new wlan for that click the wlans entry in the menu bar Locate the drop down box in the upper right, right hand corner of the WLANs screen. It will say create new. Click go to create a new WLAN. Okay, here we can see that WLANs. Click on this WLANs. And uh, here we can see this uh, create new drop down. Just to click on this uh, go. Here we can see type profile name ssid and id so here enter the profile name of the new wlan use the profile name floor to employees assign an ssid of uh, ssid-5 to the wlan change the id uh, drop down to 5 host will need to use this ssid to join the network when you are done click apply to accept your settings we will do that here uh, in this uh, profile name we will give this uh, floor to employees then ssid we will give ssid-5 then we have to change the id drop down to 5 then we will uh, click on apply they given a note here the id is an arbitrary value that is used as a label for the wlan in this case we configured it as 5 to be consistent with the vlan for the wlan it could be any available value now click apply so that the settings go into effect okay here we can see that apply we will click on it 
Now that the WLAN has been created, you can configure features of the network. Click enabled to make the WLAN functional. It is a common mistake to accidentally skip this step. Yes, here we can see that button. We have to click on this enabled. Now choose the VLAN interface that will be used for the new WLAN. The WLC will uh, use this interface for user traffic on the network. Click the drop down box for interface slash interface group G. Select the interface that we created in step 1. So here we can see that uh, interface slash interface group G. So here we can see we created WLAN-5. Then go to the advanced tab, scroll to flex connect section of the interface. So here we can see advanced option and we will go to this flex connect. Here we can see flex, flex connect. Click to enable a flex connect local switching and a flex connect local auth. Here we can see that flex connect local switching. We have to enable it. Then flex connect local auth. We have to enable it. That's fine. Then click apply to enable the new WLAN. If you forget to do this, the WLAN will not operate. So we have to click on apply. Now we will go to step 4 configure WLAN security. Instead of WPA2 PSK, we will configure the new WLAN to use a WPA2 Enterprise. Then click the WLAN ID of the newly created WLAN to continue configuring it if necessary. Then click the security tab. Then under the layer 2 tab, select WPA plus WPA2 from the drop down box. So already we are in these WLANs. Here we can see that. Otherwise, you can see this window. Uh, we have to click on this WLAN ID 5 so that again we can go to this window and here we have to go to this uh, security tab here you can see that then under this layer 2 here we can see layer 2 security uh, here we have to choose this WPA plus WPA2 okay then under WPA plus WPA2 parameters Enable WPA2 policy. So here we can see WPA plus WPA2 parameters. We have to enable this WPA2 policy. Okay. Then click 802.1x under authentication key management. Here we can see that authentication key management. We will click on this 802.1x. Click on this enable. Then this tells WLC to use the 802.1x protocol to authenticate users externally. Next is click the AAA servers tab. Open the drop down next to server 1 in the authentication servers column and select the server that we configured in step 2. Okay, we can do that. Here we can see AAA servers tab. Click on this AAA servers and we can see under this authentication servers server 1 and we will click on this drop down and here we can see that triple s server we configured 172.31.1.254 we have to choose this okay click apply to enact this configuration you have now configured the wlc to use the radius server to authenticate users that attempt to connect to the wlan we will do that here we can see apply then click ok now coming to part 2 configure a DHCP scope and SNMP step 1 configure a DHCP scope the WLC offers its own internal DHCP server Cisco recommends that the WLAN DHCP server not be used for high volume DHCP services such as that required by larger user WLANs. However, in smaller networks, 
the DCP server can be used to provide IP addresses to labs that are connected to the wired management network. In this step, we will configure a DSCP scope on the WLC and use it to address lab-1. Should be connected to the WLC GUI from admin PC. Yeah, it's here. Click the controller menu and then click interfaces. What interfaces are present? We will go to this controller menu. And then we have to click on these interfaces. And here we can see uh, interface and names WLAN-5, uh, management and virtual. Click the management interface, record its addressing information here, like IP address, net mask, gateway and the primary DSCP server. So we will click on this uh, management and we can see this information. Here we can see its IP address 192.168.200.254. Then we can see net mask. Also, we can see its gateway and the primary DSCP server. We can see it's 0, .0, .0, 0. We want the WLC to use its own DSCP server to provide addressing to devices on the wireless management network, such as a lightweight APs. For this reason, enter the IP address of the WLC management interface as the primary DCP server address. Then click Apply. Click OK to acknowledge any warning messages that appear. So just we'll uh, copy this IP address and uh, we will paste here as the primary DCP server. Now we will apply this uh, configuration and uh, just click OK. Again, click OK. In the left hand menu, expand the internal DSCP server section, then click a DHCP scope. So, here we can see this internal DSCP server. Click on it, and we can see DSCP scope. To create a DSCP scope, click the new button. So, here we can see that new button. Click on it. And we have to give the scope name. Uh, name the scope wired management. Just I will copy this uh, scope name and paste here. We will configure this DHCP scope to provide addresses to the wired infrastructure network that connects that mean PC WLC 1 and lab 1. Click apply to create the new DHCP scope. So here we have to click on apply. Click the new scope in the DSCP scopes table to configure addressing information for the scope. Enter the following information. Uh, pool start address, pool end address, then we have to give status enabled. So here we can see uh, the newly created scope name, uh, wired management, we will click on it. And we will uh, set this uh, pool start address, pool start address. Then pull end address. Then status enabled. Here we can see status enabled. Then provide the values for network, net mask, and default routers from the information you gathered in step 1C. So here in step 1C, uh, we gathered in this information. IP address, net mask, gateway, and the primary DSCP server, right? So we can update this. First is a network. So network is 192.168.200.0. We can edit that here 200.0. Then a net mask. then we have a default routers so we can give gateway and here we can see dns servers 
here the given primary DSCP server. Yeah, that's fine. Then click apply to activate the configuration. Click save configuration in the upper right hand corner of the WLC interface to save your work so that it is available when the WLC restarts. Here we will apply and we will save configuration. Click OK. Successfully saved our configuration. Now coming to step 2, configure SNMP. Click the management menu uh, in the WLC GUI and expand the entry for SNMP in the left hand menu. Click trap receivers and then new. Coming to our WLC, here we can see management. And here we have to click on this uh, SNMP in the left hand menu. Then you click trap receivers and then new. Here we can see that trap receivers. Click on this. And we have to click on this new. We have to update this uh, community name, then IP address, then status. So here we can see uh, enter the community string as WLAN underscore SNMP. Just I will copy and paste here. That's fine. Then IP address of the server at 172.31.1.254. We will give that IP address here. Then click apply to finish the configuration. So we'll click on apply. Next, we'll go to part three, connect host to the network. Step one, configure a host to connect to the enterprise network. In the packet tracer PC wireless client app, you must configure a WLAN profile in order to attach to a WPA2 enterprise WLAN. We have to click wireless host and open the PC wireless app. So just we'll minimize this admin PC and here we can see our wireless host. Here we can see this uh, PC wireless. We have to click on this uh, PC wireless. Then click the profiles tab and then click new to create a new profile. Name the profile WLC net. So here we can see profiles. We'll go to these profiles. And here we can see new. Click on this new. And we have to give the name WLC space net then click ok then highlight the wireless network name for the wlan that we created earlier and to click advanced setup so here we can see that wireless network ssid-5 then here we can see advanced setup verify that the ssid for the wireless lan is present and then click next Yes, so here we can see that wireless name network name SSID 5. So wireless host should see SSID 5. Yes, if it does not, move the mouse over lab 1 to verify that it is communicating with the WLC. The pop up box should indicate that lab 1 is aware of SSID 5. If it is not, check the WLC configuration. You can also manually enter the SSID. Here we have that name SSID-5, so we will click on next. Now we can see obtain network settings automatically, DHCP. Verify that the DHCP network setting is selected and click next. Here we can see network settings and it's in obtain network settings automatically. Then click next. Wireless security. In the security drop down box, select WPA2 Enterprise, then click Next. So here we can see WPA2 Enterprise. Then we will click on Next. Now enter 
login name user1 and the password user1pass and click next so here we can see a login name so we will give that as a user1 then here we have the password it's a user1 p a s s then we have to click next then verify the profile settings and click save and here we can see the details we given now we will click on this save button next is select the wlc net profile and click the connect to network button so here we can see connect to network even we can see return to profile screen uh, let me try with this return to profile screen and here we can see now this uh, wlc net we will click on this profile and we will give connect after a brief delay you should see the wireless host connect to lab dash one you can click the fast forward time button to speed up the process uh, if it seems to be taking too long here we can see our wireless host connected to this cell lab dash one perfect confirm that wireless host has connected to the wlan wireless host should receive an ip address from the dscp server that is configured for host on r1 the address will be in the 192.168.5.0/24 network you may need to click the fast forward time button um, speed up the process okay we will go to this wireless host you can uh, speed up this and go to wireless host we will uh, close this uh, window we can go to ip configuration and here we can see ip address is from this uh, subnet 5.0 and here we we can see the ip address 192.168.5.3 subnet to mask then here we can see it's a default gateway it's perfect coming to step 2 test connectivity close the pc wireless app then open a command prompt and confirm that wireless host laptop has obtained an ip address from the wlan network so what network should the address be in explain yeah already we have seen that uh, this uh, uh, pc uh, wireless host got the ip address uh, from the subnet uh, 192.168.5.0 Ping the default gateway SW1 and the radius server. Success indicates a full connectivity within this topology. We will go to our addressing table so that we can take the IP address of these devices. We'll go to wireless host, choose command prompt, and uh, we can uh, ping to its uh, default gateway. Then press enter. And here we can see we get the replies then we will ping to sw-1 maybe we, we get one or two requests timed out then we will get the reply Yeah, it's working once more we can verify it just press up arrow from keyboard and again press enter and we can see it succeeded then we will ping to this radius server we'll copy this ip address then coming to wireless host ping to radius server here is the ip address and we get the replies right so friends in this video we discussed uh, packet tracer activity configure a wpa2 enterprise wlan on the wlc here we can see our completion status it's a hundred percent now dear friends if you have any doubt any suggestions regarding this activity please comment below or you can contact our team using our website and if you like your video give a thumb 
and share with all your friends. Stay tuned. We will meet again with the next video. Thank you.